Okay, so today we're going to talk about solar regulators. What are they? What do they do? Well, I'll teach you what the different types are and what one is going to suit your particular needs. So today I'm John from Springer Solar. Let's get into a good look at solar regulators. So first off, we'll just explain what a solar regulator does and why you need a solar regulator. Okay, so we do get asked from time to time if you just can connect a solar panel straight to a battery and it will charge the battery. Uh, it will to a point and then it will continue to overcharge the battery. So if you've got a 12 volt solar panel, you're going to be producing around uh, 17 or 18 volts. So if you connect that solar panel directly to your 12 volt battery, eventually it's going to take it to 17 volts and blow that battery up. Okay, so you really need a regulator to control the charge from the solar panel that goes into your battery. Okay, so regulator is a must if you want to connect a solar panel up to your battery. What it does, it just takes the power from the solar panel and makes sure it charges the battery correctly. And when the battery gets full, it stops charging so that the battery doesn't blow up like a balloon and wreck your battery. So a really critical piece of any 12 volt setup is your solar regulator. So now we know, obviously we need a solar regulator for our solar panel. Now we need to look at what type of uh, regulator that you're gonna require. There are two main types of solar regulators on the market today. There's what you call a PWM regulator, so pulse width modulation. So that is like a cheap, oh, probably a cheaper version of solar regulator. Then you've got your better quality MPPT regulator. Um, look, we will strongly recommend an MPPT regulator for you. For most applications, they are just a better quality regulator. They do a much better job of harvesting your solar that you're getting from your panel. So MPPT stands for multi power point tracking, okay? So these guys definitely do a much better job than a PWM. Now, the biggest difference between the two of them is really with a PWM, you must have a 12 volt solar panel charging a 12 volt battery, okay? You you can't use a high voltage panel to charge a low voltage battery with one of these guys, otherwise you just lose too much power. With an MPPT, you can use a high voltage panel to charge a 12 volt battery. It takes the power in and it converts it to what the battery requires. Okay, so, so you can see here, this one is a 7515. So what that means is it can take up to 75 volts from your solar panel, so 75 volts in, and it will convert that down to the correct voltage to charge your 12 volt battery. Um, and it will output 15 amps as a maximum. Okay, so up to 75 volts in, and it'll work fine, uh, and give you 15 amps to charge your batteries. The PWM regulator, if, if you were to put a high voltage panel in this, let's just let's just use an example of say a 400 watt solar panel. Let's just say you've got a 400 watt solar panel that produces 40 volts and 10 amps, okay? This is going to allow the 10 amps to go through to your battery, all right, and that's it. It, it doesn't change the power whatsoever. It will cut off when the battery is full but it'll only put 10 amps into your battery. So you're only probably gonna be harvesting about 140 watts of power from your 400 watt solar panel. So really inefficient if you're using a high voltage panel. That's why you must use a 12 volt panel to charge a 12 volt battery with one of these guys. This, these type regulators, not this one specifically, I'm not saying this is the right size for a 400, but an MPPT will drop the voltage to charge a battery, but it will increase the amps so that you're getting your 400 watts out of your solar panel, okay? So it changes the power and it will increase the amps where this one will leave the amps alone. So high voltage or a big system, you really need to go an MPPT regulator, much more power out of them, much more efficient. So if you buy a PWM regulator, like I said, they are a cheaper regulator. Um, so if you're just doing a really simple, small system, they're fine to use. 
Um, something like that is probably going to cost you 40 or 50 dollars. If you upgrade to an MPP-C, you're going to get a lot more power out of your solar panel. Something like this is $70 or $80. So it's not that much more expensive, okay? Obviously, they're different sizes that come at different prices. But MPP-C is really inexpensive these days for the quality of them. Uh, so a much better regulator. The other big thing about your MPP-Ts is with the Victron range uh, and Alvolta as well, most of them come with Bluetooth, so you can program them to charge any battery you like and you get full system monitoring of them, so you know exactly what's going into your battery. If there's any problems, we will know what's the cause of those problems, okay? So, as you can see, there's lots of different size solar regulators, particularly in the MPPT range. They've got a massive range of sizes. You know, starting off, I think 10 amps the smallest the Victron do. Uh, it, it'll do like 150 watt solar panel. Um, they go right through to your biggest one here is 100 amps. They actually do bigger, but we won't talk about them today. But a 100 amp regulator can do a solar panel array of about 1400 watts on, on a 12 amp battery. And you've got pretty much everything in between there. You know, 30, 50, 60, the whole range. So. Pretty much no matter what your solar panel or panel arrangement is, there is a regulator to suit that particular size. So now we want to discuss how you size the appropriate regulator for your solar panel. Okay, uh, so probably there, there is an easy way to do it. On the Victron, if you're looking at a Victron PPT regulator, uh, on the Victron website, they have an actual calculator. You can go in there, put in your solar panel information, and it will then spit out what regulator they are recommending for you, okay? So that's that's one easy way of doing it. Another way, you've got a 400 watt solar panel and you want to charge a 12 volt battery. Simple calculation is 400 watts and you divide that by 14.4 because that's what the regulator is going to charge the battery at most of the time. It can change a little bit, but 14.4 is going to be close enough for that it's not a problem. Okay, so that's 27.7 amps, all right? So basically that's telling me I'm going to need a 30 amp regulator to run that solar panel properly, okay? Uh, always just go that next one up from whatever the amp rating comes to. Now, if we were going to charge a 23 volt battery with that same solar panel, obviously a solar panel would must have to be a 24 volt solar panel you would need a 15 amp regulator because it's half the size at 24 volts than it is at 12 volt okay so always just keep that in mind a 12 volt battery is always going to need a bigger regulator than a 24 volt battery or a 48 volt battery okay and most of these regulators can do 12 or 24 you do have to program it if you want to charge a 24 volt battery okay so that's how you size the amp rating now the other thing too is you are if you go a little bit over on the amp rating that's okay um i, I sort of say if you're about 30 percent over so like this regulator here is a 50 regulator it can handle going up to um say possibly 65 amps coming from the solar panels but it will only give you 50 okay but it won't hurt the regulator so you are allowed to oversize the amps but do not oversize the voltage all right you know that 100 volt limit on this guy here that is a firm limit if you go one volt over that you can potentially fry this regulator so we say probably stay 10 percent below that rating with your solar panel or your solar panel array and always use the open circuit voltage of your solar panel to work out the maximum solar voltage of your panel or your array and don't go within 10% of that because voltage can fluctuate depending on temperatures and other things like that. Okay, so we know that there's obviously a lot of different solar panel arrangements, solar panel voltages, different setups on the market. Maybe in another video we'll do, shortly we'll get into all the different types of solar arrangements, how to wire them up, how to wire up your solar regulator. So we'll do that in another video. But today we just wanted to give you a real basic run now of solar regulators you know what they do what types there are and just how to size them up so it's just a simple video today but again just in conclusion basically pwms simple cheap 
for just basic setups. 12 volt panel, 12 volt battery, or 24 volt panel, 24 volt battery with these guys here. So if you're not too concerned about how much power you get out of your system, PWM's fine. But really, 90% of solar regulators sold these days are MPVTs because they're very cheap, they're very efficient. Bluetooth monitoring, much better regulator. And you know, you can sort of pretty well do any voltage solar panel to charge a 12 volt battery. You're always going to need a 24 volt or higher solar panel to charge a 24 volt battery. Okay, so you always need to have your higher voltage coming down to charge your battery even with the MPPTs, but it will do it in a much more efficient way. So we hope you got something out of today's video. Like I said, just a simple rundown of solar regulators and what they do. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and get on our website and check out our range of solar regulators. Yeah.